Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Dicking Around in the Garage. I don't know if you guys remember last week's video or not, where we assembled the wiring harness over here. Let's... Oh, numb torch ain't gonna work, I just broke it. Good job. Yeah. See... Get that out of there. See this mess right here? Guess what? It's time to put that on the bike. So let's get the camera angle switched around and get the seat off the bike and show you guys how we're going to do that. Hey guys, I went ahead and took the seat off and I've done videos in the past where I've had all this stuff out. So no point in wasting your time with that. Now, we have to find a way to hide all this crap too. And I am going to try to go off the harness back here. They want you to go off of the harness right here. But it should be the same back there. Should be. I'm not saying that it's going to be, but it should be. So, essentially what we have to do here is get your long ground wire and your hot wire and pull them out of there. Separate. There's your ground. So, pretty simple. Just connect your battery. My main fuse is pulled. I always pull the main fuse. And we're just going to rough this in right now and make sure it's working. And I'll probably end up tearing stuff out of here, cleaning this area up yet again. This area gets so dirty. But clean it up and then tidying everything up afterwards. We need to get a fuse for this. Where the fuse is over there somewhere. We're not going to put fuse in before we hook it up. In fact, I should probably pull the fuse out of these other fusible lengths, but we'll just blow them and change them. Seems to be how it goes. That's like good news. We got a test line. Fuse, popping it back in, or putting it in, I should say, for the first time. We're not popping it back in. I give you a little 15 amp fuse. Wow, that is a tight link. I can tell you that right now. That biscuit ain't coming out of here. Alright, we cover that up. Right there. Which probably does nothing at all, but I don't want to take it. Oh yeah, alright. See what it does. Mission on. Lights are on. Now, shall we go with the ground? Oh, I hope this doesn't turn to mud. We'll go off battery ground. At the reground. Let's see if we have anything on brown. Nothing on brown. Let's see. Oh, there's green. 
screen. That's silly. See, that's why you do this. Green is for your running lights. See, you have power. Green is for your running lights. This doesn't make sense, guys. Yeah, right turn signal is probably going to be brown. Right, brown is dead. Right turn signal is yellow. <laughs> they got this all color coded backwards. Right turn signal is yellow. Let's cut that off. Let's see which one the break is. What do you guys think? Not brown. Must be blue, huh? Yep. Blue's break. So, brown must be left turn. Right. Brown must be left turn. Let's turn the left turn on and see. Yep. So don't assume anything by the color codes. And, um, back to Open Road Outfitters, man. Um, I, I know you're not the one who builds the harnesses, or maybe you are. But if you're not, I mean, who whoever makes these things, like seriously, brown, that's your running lights, okay? That's what it should be. So when you build a module, make brown your running lights. Make green your right turn signal. Make yellow your left turn signal. Make blue your brake light. Even though you should have a red on there for your brake light, but because you have power here going, you're using red. I understand that. Blue, B, brake. Yellow, L, left. Green, R, right. Brown, R, run. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I, I guess that's my rant. So... I'm going to have to test all this again, write it down, and get my plug and check. Because on my plug, I'm. You guys will see how I'm doing it. So, let me cut this off for a minute. Probably readjust some things. Real quick, we got a bracket too. Which I will have to modify. <laughs> yeah, modify. Because it's not for a motorcycle. But I'll show you guys that when I get it done. But it'll hold the plug, essentially. Maybe. I don't know. I've had a real hard time trying to get the plug in there. So, I'll throw that up there out of the way. Okay, I have gone through, written down all my color codes. Green is the run, yellow is the right turn. Boy, that throws me off. Brown is the left turn, blue is brake, white is ground. Of course, one, two, three, four, five wire. However, when you get to the trailer side of things, white is the ground, brown is the marker, yellow is the left turn, green is the right turn, and blue is the brake. So this stuff is not going to be color coded like it should be. I mean, if, if, if you look, you have the same color wires, typically, but why? And I could figure it out. To make it do what I want it to do. 
and be color coded by switching those wires around over there off the uh what the the, the uh the connector to the isolator slash can bus assembly the harness we built last week yeah I could I could do that and make it to where all you have to do is hook your colors up correctly the way he should be but we'll we'll wire it up stupid like they want it it oh, doesn't make sense doesn't make a lick of sense at all drive a feller nuts So if this is your first time watching a wiring video of mine, we don't use non-weather sealed butt connectors, and we don't use electrical tape around connectors. We do use the solder style connectors where right in there is a piece of solder which most of you guys probably saw that last week check that one more time green is run brown's going to be run on the trailer well, I'm just going by the way the trailer lights actually work so when I go through and put the new end and everything on the trailer itself <laughs> at least the trailer is right <laughs> All right you slide that up there like so Get our handy dandy butane torch. Get the outside first, because I know some solder's probably going on out there. Time out. You guys get the gist of it, right? Shrink them together. That ain't coming apart. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save you guys the hassle of having to watch me do all of these. And we're just going to shortcut on through. And uh, we will show you once we get everything tidied up on here. And how I did the bracket and everything. Um, because that's going to have to be, I don't have a welder, and I'm going to have to weld it on. So, I'll probably take it over to Polly, and have him help me, give him something to do on someday. He likes to weld. Which I do too, so, I mean, ain't no big deal, it'd just be a couple of tack welds. But I just need to mark everything out to get everything in place, so I can put it on. Can't find what I'm looking for. I found something else, but I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh my. I rolled black tape out here the other day. And I know. I tell you guys not to use electrical tape on wiring. And you guys are like, well, what are you doing? Well, tape all the wires together real nice and tight. So. Finding an empty bucket instead of a full bucket. But since we couldn't find any black electrical tape, and I had a whole roll of it, but I think I tossed it in my tool bag and took it with me. And it's not here no more. So since it's the blue bike and dual Thursday, we're going to use blue tape. Yeah, I have colored, but I don't have black. So we're going to pull the wires all nice and even together as well as we can up to there tape them up and then we got 25 feet of quarter inch split loom the good stuff it's like a mesh and it will resist some heat unlike the plastic stuff the plastic stuff will just melt and we got 10 feet of 3 eighths we're going to try to use the quarter inch on this, just because that will neaten it up more, but it may not work. You may have to do three eighths, but we're going to try quarter inch. So, let me tape this up, and we're going to keep the tape away from the splices. Okay, we'll put a piece over here and a piece down here somewhere, but we're going to leave plenty of space there to where moisture gets in there. It doesn't hold in here. These will have a chance to dry out on the outside. Water shouldn't get inside of them because they're shrink wrapped and weather sealed and soldered. But I mean, over time, something's going to corrode. So, repair. So, but go back and watch my. Yeah, well, it might be. No, my harness build video. They. They all did just make it, yeah. So, let me get that. I'll show you guys that, and then we'll start wrapping it. Nope. That's not going to work. My color tape has lost its elasticity, or its stickiness. Yeah, its stickiness. It won't stick no more. Oh, boy, a son of a biscuit. Yeah, it won't stick. Can't go that route. Alright. I gotta search and find some stuff. So, that'll go in the garbage. Darn. It'd been nice to use blue tape on the blue black and dual Thursday. Alright, so. If you look, you can see. We've got the wire run. I'll take you guys around the other side and show you. It's all zip tied up. But we've got the wire all ran. We went ahead. We had a new battery. Um, last year, beginning of the season, 
like was acting funky, it been on a battery tender all year. It didn't want to start. I got a battery for it, and uh, I was going to change it before own, but I didn't. We ended up taking new battery with us just in case, but ended up riding all year last year with it. Uh, I pulled the fuse box off so I could get down in here because your battery has a place on the top and a place on the side where you can screw stuff to. So all my accessory stuff I screwed onto the side terminal and then put everything else on the top just to kind of neaten it up some. I am having a problem with the pin for the trailer harness. I emailed Dale over at Outfitters. I've put the stupid thing back together twice now and I end up having to unplug it just so I can get the wiring where I need it to be. And guess what? It comes apart. Here's your plastic keeper that goes in there. So I emailed him. We'll see if he gets back to me. If not, well, you guys know what I'll do. Uh, like I said, I had the fuse box off. And this is where uh, things got interesting. I had the fuse box off. And I went ahead and pulled the ECM out. This is the... BCM for your body control module. This is the ECM. Well, the ECM was laying down here because I had it out of here just so I could move some wiring around and give me some extra room inside there. Well, when I had that out and I put the main fuse back in, everything just turned the key on to see if the lights would work. Guess what? Nothing would work because it thought the bike was tipped over. So there is a tip angle sensor in here and there's a tip angle sensor in here thanks bikes tipped over not gonna start not gonna run but that's all we have to do is kind of tidy that up a little bit probably just zip tie all this let me walk on the other side there Probably tuck this up under here like this. Put some zip ties around that. Make it nice and neat there. Zip tie that. And we'll, I don't know. Probably figure it out. There's just no good place to put this crap. I mean, you're adding crap to it. So there's no good place to do it. But we did that. We got that all done. Now we gotta put this back together again. Which will be fun. But yeah, we'll get this all done up and trying to reuse the factory clips and run it, route it, keep everything as close to factory routing as possible so we know what's what. And then all my fusible links for like my heat grips, my cell phone charger, and my heated gear, which is coming out there. We'll zip tie that up some. Side cover goes over it. But that's the wiring for the trailer bike. Let's bring you guys over here and show you. I know where my light went. But you guys can see it comes off of here under the fender strut and I just kind of ran it alongside with the zero light so it's all nice and pretty in there zip tied comes down cushion clamp then down to the back yeah I know that's kind of close to the exhaust or whatever and we'll just we'll see what that does like I said I don't know I was just trying to do something to where I didn't have to have wires laying and flapping. Do something to make it look neater. Uh, with the wire loom that we put around it, it should resist the heat and temperatures. That's the uh, same stuff we use it. Same stuff that they put on the semi trucks and run over the uh, DPF systems and all that stuff. And that stuff gets hot. So. I mean, sometimes you get mailed wires, but 
not all the time. All right, guys. Um, we thought we had the harness deal all figured out and whatnot to where we had it routed, but you run into a problem. The way they have designed this is just, I'm going to flat out say it, um, it's piss poor. Their, their design has some flaws. There's no good way to hide your CAN bus, which is right here in my left hand, or your isolator. I tried to take it, and I was going to hide it under here, but then... What I do with it? It's here somewhere. The splitter. The splitter wouldn't reach. Right? So, which I had to get a new splitter. I will say that Dale was kind enough to send me a new one and not charge me because the plastic piece broke out of it. It was still working. And that's the other thing. They tell you here, I'll show you. They tell you to plug the Y connector in right here. But. Unless you have a special, it won't work there. If you have an Ultra or a Trike, you have to come back here. And they don't tell you that. I just know that from um, a buddy's Trike when he put his on. And also whenever I put my Ciro lights on. Because Ciro's instructions tell you to do the same thing. Plug it in up here. And guess what? You can't. You have to plug it in there. And that's actually the Y connector for the serial lights. It's there. And it'll actually come off and go to over there. But I have to now, in turn, to make things work. Because we're not doing just a weekend mount. You know what I mean? This would be fine if you were just throwing something on your bike for the weekend. You know, take it, zip tie it, wherever. I'm not doing that. I'm doing this as something to put on there and leave on there. And now I have to take and cut this off. All these little thingies here. Cut them all off. Add wire to it. Make my own harness. So then I can go over to the other side. Tie it into the Y connector and then have the Y connector there. Because... These won't reach in behind the seat, the isolator and the sub bus. I tried to run them here on the right side, but they're just sitting up. And I, I fear that when you put the seat on, all you're going to do is mash the wires. Because we all know the Harley seat pans, you know, they sit on the frames. So try to run everything with your stock harness is the idea of it and make it look like nothing's added to it in my opinion well they don't make that easy on you so now we're going to take and we're going to hide the isolator and the can bus down here this is another accessory which again somebody got too fucking cute and decided hey you need 50 miles of wire when you don't you know, you, you don't need all that damn wiring. You just, you don't. But, I'm going to make my own harness off of their harness. Um, I do not recommend, unless you're just going to put it on for the weekend. I, I, I would definitely do my research. I wouldn't buy a harness off of Open Road Outfitters until they get some more R&D done. And, you know... That's just, you guys know how we are over here on this channel. We're 100% honest about stuff. And I will email Dale. I'm not going to be a dick. I'm just going to email him and say, hey, bud. I think you guys got, they, they've got a good thing going here. They just need to, they could improve upon it drastically. It, it, it's got a lot of room for improvement. But let me get this done and all connected up. And then we'll show you guys how, in my opinion, it should be done. So, let's do that. Okay, here's what we come up with. We ran the isolator and cam bus down under here. It's out here in the side cover. 
Um, I had to test fit the side cover because the heated grip harness and all that stuff. I'm trying to stuff that all in there. If you're just doing this harness, fine. If you don't have heat grips or no other accessories. And we added wire. Of course, wrapped it up real nice and neat. Come under the backrest mount. Over. There you go. All zip tied. Should have enough room to get our seat bolt in. And that's that. So... That's how we did that one. Appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Um, hopefully it was informative for somebody out there. Like I said, I um, I would do more research before just going with this harness. And I'm not leaving a link to it or anything like that. I got it from Open Road Outfitters. I will say that. And I will say that I would not buy it. Um, I spent the money on it. And I already went through and done all the stuff. And got stuff out and all that. And I just, once I got up here to the hookup point, it was not as advertised. So, um... Not as advertised, plus when, what was it, 180 bucks, I think, for the harness. I don't think that you should have to splice a harness together paying 180 bucks for it. I mean, it, if that's the case, give me the CAN bus and the isolator and a wiring diagram, and I'll splice it myself. You know, I'll make my own. What they should do is they should just do pinout kits with it and plugs and be have it done that way they give you too much harness in places where you don't need it and they don't give you enough harness in places where you do need it but then again if you're just a weekend warrior and you're just throwing this thing on there for the weekend you could probably make it work i wanted mine on there so i have to keep taking it on and off i don't believe that once you put especially an electrical accessory I don't believe that you should have to plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it. That's why you'll never see me put saddlebag lights on. Do I think they look nice? Yes, I do. Do I think they help you be seen? Yes, I do. However, if you go take the saddlebag off to service your brakes or to, in my case, adjust a shock or change a tire, guess what? You have to unplug that plug. And the plugs just aren't designed for that, in my opinion. Plug them in once, done. Um, we had a problem with a plug, brand new plug. And I think what happened, it plugs in up here. It doesn't work, but it plugs in up there. It's a tighter fit. The pins are the same, they're the same size and everything. But just all the plugging and unplugging broke it. So they're not meant for that to be done. They're meant to be plugged in and forgotten about. Done. Put on, do it once, that's it. So they they need to uh, definitely do some R&D, like I said earlier. But there you guys go. I kept you long enough. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel. And... Uh, I know Open Road Outfitters doesn't make the harness, but whoever you're having make the harness, they they got some work to do in my opinion. So we'll see y'all in the next one.